Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spin all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. One tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, tea sippers. So we are here back by popular demand. I have BL Sherelle with me. I know a lot of y'all have been asking why we haven't done a podcast in a while. She's been busy. I've been busy, but we had to reconnect for this whole little dirt uh, saga. We're going to talk about Diddy. We're going to hit on a lot of stuff. Now, one thing, BL. Well, before we get started, say what's up? B. Yes, what's I miss. Up? Yes, I miss my tea sippers. I miss everybody. So, hi. I've been going. I'm back. She but my words was everlasting. Right. I've been right. <laughs> so, y'all got to give me my, you ain't getting me teased. When right. I tell you what, what we need to call it, BL Stradamus and Tigrodamus. I'm getting there. We were saying all of this back in 2020. Remember in 2020, before it became cute and before Trap Laura, or what is it, Tap Trap? Laura, yeah. mm-hmm. before he came out with the whole King Von serial killer compilation, I said this back in 2020 that I felt no ways about what happened to him like that because at the end of the day, he was a serial killer. If, if these were regular people, if this was a white man in the Ozarks, you know what I'm saying, killing multiple people, y'all will call them a serial killer. But when it comes to a rapper, oh, they're hitters and shooters. No, these are people who have tasted blood and they are addicted to it. And then you was also hitting on the fact with Young Thug, and we talked about the Young Thug trial. Yes, the Young Thug trial, first of all, it turned out nothing like I imagined. I said that the state tends to be messy, like more messy than the feds. So he had a chance. But this is just, I don't even think, this is like an episode of Boondocks. It really is. And (laughs) the funny thing with the whole Young Thug situation is the fact, like, Imagine me minding my black ass business and they start playing my video during the trial. I'm like, that is your evidence? A video that I did when I used to live in L.A. like back in 2015? Like, how dare you drag me into this mess? A video about what? What was it about? Because I had did a breakdown like back in the day when uh, Lil Wayne's bus got shot up. Mm -hmm. And I did a breakdown. And you know me, I make connections. That's just what I do. So I had connected it to Young Thug. And people was cussing me out, oh, you reaching and you doing too much. They use that video in the trial. That's crazy. They, they, it's like they didn't have nothing but witness, no. like testimony from people that's switching up their story. So it's like, what you want to do with that? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it's a mess. So I had hit you up today because I'm like, I know you heard about the little dirt drama. I was reading the indictment last night. What <laughs> happened in the morning? <laughs> it's a mess. But we knew this was coming. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we could take it back to the whole situation with um FBG Duck. I hate the, the letters. They're like they just like mumble together, but duck. We can take it back to that situation. A lot of people were saying back then that they felt like King Von and his boys were behind that hit because, you know, Duck and Von were beefing for a while. You know, they were all throwing disses at each other. And then the way it happened so publicly, and then those guys went back on social media and was basically bragging about it. And like, you know, you could just tell it came from OTF. Yeah. And and so, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So a lot of people just assumed that little Dirk was the money man behind that hit. And in the paperwork, it suggested that. But because I think what happened was D-Thing, Dirk's brother, ended up getting killed in the midst and I feel like they can only really tie it at that time to D thing. Mm-hmm. Like it went from like Vine and then say Vine is number three. Then D thing is number two. He's the buffer. And then Dirk is number one. So sometimes it, it's those buffers protect the top. Mm-hmm. And I think since D thing, his unfortunate murder, I think that made Vine more accessible. I mean, mm-hmm. Dirk more accessible for them to actually get. I think it wasn't enough evidence prior when D thing was alive. But yeah. They knew. It was in the paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. People have been saying that for years. And then what's so interesting, we also have the mess going on with Big Juke and CMG mm-hmm. and Yogati. And I think that's the same situation where, you know, 
they could kind of pin everything on Big Juke. But now that he's gone, like you said, that buffer's gone. Yep. So I'm hearing there's going to be a Rico coming against your Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Soon. I believe that. I believe yeah. that. And, that's pretty, and the shit about the Duck thing that made me so upset was Duck had made a song called Chicago Legends like mm -hmm. a little before. He was trying to piece it up. He was saying like, he was naming everybody from both sides. Like this person is dead and this person did that. Like, instead of dissing, he was saying good things. And they clowned him for it. Yeah. And they chastised him for it. And he was trying to get into the industry. So he was just trying to show a different side. He was just willing to put everything behind him. And he let his pride get the best up. Then he started dissing again. And then he got killed. But he got aggravated by those demons. You understand what I'm saying? Like he was trying to Do change. Yeah. But it's like they couldn't let him, you know. And that's why I say that social media has a very demonic influence in a lot of this stuff that's going on. A lot of this is the fans and the platforms that are egging it on. What I find very interesting with this whole little Dirk situation, when it was announced that he was popped, you got DJ Academics fake crying, acting like he's just so distraught. But this is the same man who was piecing it up with Takashi 6 9 That was his homeboy. He was platforming him. And Takashi 6 9 had that whole song called, you know, Slide for Vaughn. Yeah. And all these platforms were promoting that song and fanning the flames. Now you got, you know, uh, Adam 22 coming out with a disrespectful tweet. Let me see if I have that here. Let me pull that up real quick. Yeah, of course, of course. he's doing everything for content. And of course, it was disingenuous when you make fun out on the floor and all that. I saw that clip. But I do think a part of it is he started his career with the World Show. Right. And I think for him, Dirt getting locked up is like an end of an era. Mm. Because there is no more Chirac artists that are like super big. Some of them are still bubbling under, you know, but they've been around for years and it's never worth going to get to that level. And then you got like Polo G and all of them, but they're not really a part of the Chirac series. In terms of the Chirac series, Dirk was like the last one. Everybody's dead or locked up. So I think he just had a moment where he realized, damn, I started my career with all these people and now I'm here and like the outcome for all of them is just death or jail. And I think it was just a moment with mixed with content and mixed with playing it up. But I do think he was feeling something from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there has to be a guilt, almost a guilt by association because, you know, and, and I get it. He came into this game, you know, doing the whole Warren Chirac and, you know, kind of making a mockery of the situation, but also, you know, calling them to task like this is stupid. Y'all are just killing each other. But he did it in a mockery. And then these guys started to blow up. So people are saying, you know, are is there blood on his hands as well? Because, again, a lot of these platforms, they play into the drama. They play into the beef. They claim they want to interview both sides and get both sides of the stories, not understanding that they're really fanning the flames behind the scenes, including the fans. And then when shit gets real, everybody wants to act like, you know, like they had nothing to do with the situation. Like everybody wants to fall back like they wasn't screaming slide for Vaughn not even four years ago. You get triggered by the Beat slide. the shit out of this little ass, man. What are you, you talking about? You get triggered by the slide for Vaughn comments. Still, I don't know if people still say it. They used to say it, but you also mentioned a song. They'd be like, they be singing Sly for Vaughn. I think they trolling me. Yo, by the way, them songs is fire. I ain't gonna lie. For some reason, I just don't see them comments no more. For some odd reason. I don't know. Might be the water. You be seeing them comments a lot? They kind of chilled out a little bit. I wonder why. We here though. And with all these, I, he's locked up, nigga. I got the whole shit, the mug show. No, no. No. Right. And then when he actually slid, not everybody's trying to play crazy. You, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. You can't serve two masters. And also, oh. media is the most powerful influence in our country. Mm. So, if you know that, which I think academics know that. Mm -hmm. So, if you know that, you have to be careful with that power. You know what I mean? And But I think it's too late for him to... I don't think he knew that when he did the wrong Chirac. Yeah. Yeah. I think he knows it now. Mm -hmm. 
So what do you do from now to whenever? And people been critical of him, like covering the cases and breaking down the lyrics and all that shit. But if you don't give them this content to be able to cover, then what can he do with it? If I'm writing lyrics about a crime I literally committed, and then somebody is reading the lyrics online, how can you be mad at the person reading the lyrics more than you're mad at the person who made the lyrics and put the song on? Right. It's like niggas is allergic to accountability. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. It's like they'll blame everybody else. They'll blame, you know, like I said, yes, some of the content creators play a role in some of the instigation. But at the end of the day, when are we going to hold the rappers accountable as well? Yeah. You know, even now, Adam 22, I found his tweet. This is what he said. So he says, dirt getting locked up really makes me want to focus on my music career. I need to be the voice now that he's gone. Mm -hmm. Fucking troll, sick nigga. Yeah, it's like, again, he's so far removed from the streets, from real hip hop, but these are the folks that we give a platform to and that we have now made them the voice of hip hop. Um, I feel like Vlad has never tried to condone it, put it that way. He's not like an Adam 22 where he's like in it and instigating it, at least to my knowledge. But I don't watch him because I can't, I just don't like watching people who are not a part of a certain community just dominate a certain space. I just, that's just not my bad. You know what I'm saying? So I could be wrong, but I feel like I've seen him not necessarily condone the behavior on yes. most times. Yeah, I don't think he condones it, but he definitely benefits, yes. you know, off of giving the platform, off of the drama, you know, the way he asks his questions. He just sounds like a Fed officer, you know what I mean? And Absolutely. again, it's on the goofies who decide to listen to him and they just keep confessing all their sins as if he's a Catholic priest. It's like, why are you getting on his platform telling them everything you did? Like, like there's a statute of limitations. Uh, case in point, A.R. Ab from Philly. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't bring I mean, it up. You give me secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> he made Philly look crazy, okay? He said, I killed three. He said, he killed three people. He said, I watched them do it. I saw so <laughs> shit. You can't make this stuff up. So I, that's why I feel so much. I know it. A reckless when he like said, that. I killed the nigga and I did that, I seen him do it. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.